You know, right now we're out and we're doing one of my favorite activities when it comes to fishing. We're fishing for lake trout. I'm in the Traverse City area. I'm with Sportfish Michigan, two, guy, two actually charter captains, Ron Dome Jr. and Captain Chad Diltz. I love fishing lake trout. I've fished them all over North America from out western reservoirs, Canada, uh, throughout the Great Lakes. And we're gonna go out and we're gonna do some vertical jigging. These guys do a lot of different fish, you know, guiding for various fish species, but this is a sort of an interesting program. You guys do a lot and you take your uh, parties out here. What, do you, what are we gonna do? We're gonna, we're gonna, you know, do some scanning and some searching. We're really gonna use the sonar and spot lock technology to kind of get over the fish, drop down, try to get them to bite. If they don't go, we'll move on to the next school, but you know, it's a great technique. It's super fun. It's hands-on. And Yeah, that's one thing I like about this because a lot of uh, Great Lakes, when they, people think about, you know, Lake Michigan, you think about trolling with big spreads of lines, boards, dipsies, divers, all this different gear. This is more of a, a straight rod reel and a spoon and you're ready to rumble. It's extremely hands-on. <laughs> yeah. Let's go do it. Yeah. Ready. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. So we're just kind of cruising along looking for underwater points and steep breaks. As you can see, we're just coming into some nice suspended fish right here. They're suspended about 80 down over uh, 103 feet. So this is exactly what you want to find. You know, as soon as you mark them on the front transducer, um, on that front hummingbird, we know that we can stop our forward propulsion, put it in reverse. We're just gonna go ahead and hit spot lock on the Trilva remote and drop down and hope they're active. What we found is when you do put it in reverse, stop propulsion, you're trying to stay on top of the fish, especially when it's calm and you're inside of 80 feet, we like to just shut the motor down. Um, you know, our water's so clear up here, you know, we can see bottom in 50 feet, um, 60 feet sometimes. So I feel like the fish can really hear the motor and see the boat. Um, so it's nice to shut the motor down and um, try to let those fish not, not spook, so. Hey, he means business. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Okay. Wow. You might be a little wild with that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's acting mature. Here we go. Yes, there Double you go. Header. Well, I'll tell you what, gentlemen, I'll uh, I'll grab the net. <laughs> <laughs> wow, isn't it crazy when they fire up? Uh, right now we're in uh, second, third week of July. You not only do this in sp in the summer, but you do this during the spring too for yes. the lake trout. Yeah, we do. You know, like when the when the water column is is really cold out offshore. You know, in the early spring months and ice out, you know, the first thing to warm up is the shallow water. So a lot of these lake trout species and, um, you know, the colder water species like lake trout, cisco, um, whitefish, they all come in shallow to feed. So, you know, Ron and I and Captain Ben will get out and we'll cast, uh, cast these jigs for them. We throw blade baits in shallow. Uh, and then as, you know, the thermocline sets up in June and July, that's when we can really come out and it forces, the temperature forces them down to bottom and you can really pinpoint them on bottom. Well, not only that, it's, you know, that you were talking about the stocking programs. I mean, there's a, it's amazing because we were driving around these points, how many fish there are. It's incredible, I mean, how many fish there are here. I mean, it's yeah. like you drive around and there's fish everywhere. And he said, no, they're, they're all lake trout. Yeah, I'm for like, sure. wow. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely. There he is. Looks like here he is right here. Wow, look at how, how deep is he? I mean, the water clarity in here is just unbelievable. Yeah. Well, there we go. Come here, buddy. There we go. Good work, James. There Great you go. fish. Oop. Come here. Wow. Gorgeous. Boy. I'm going to have to leave this hook in the net. Ooh, wow. <laughs> yeah, you got a bigger one there. Wow. Get him. Holy man. Yes, bro. sir. Wow. We got wow. a bit of a mess, but that's a good one. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. That's a great fish. This came unbuttoned okay. to him. See if I can get a hold over here. Yep. Look at I those mean, these things. guys, look at the food these things are. You can see these guys are eating. They're healthy. That's L wives and gobies. That. Yeah, let's L wives and gobies do wonders for these fish up here. Boy, let's get her get them back in Send the water. Home. Yeah, James, uh, you and I and Ron were talking about population earlier, and, you know, we see such a nice mix of natural fish and planted fish that have fin clips. Um, but it's just so amazing the population of fish that are in the Great Lakes system. You know, you have the feds that are planting fish and, and managing the population and, you know, constantly putting fish in each year. And then you have the state of Michigan and the state of Wisconsin also planting fish. So you get that really nice equal balance. And regionally, it seems like there's great populations everywhere. So 
it's it's just really fun for the people that want to get out and troll or they want to jig or cast for them. It's just a awesome fish to kind of get year round. Oh yeah, yeah. I really like the hands on versus the the trolling bit when you're just jig fishing for these. I mean, these are big, strong fish. You know, for you guys, I know it's got to be a fabulous. Uh, fish to fish for with your uh, clients. It's you know, a blast. And, they're, they're, yeah. they're super coachable. I mean, you're dropping a jig down, you're reeling one to three cranks off bottom, jig, yeah. jig. And once you find your cadence, yeah. you're hooking up. I like guess it's, it's game on. So it's, it's just so user friendly. Kids, grandparents, mom, yeah. dad, even yeah. if you don't fish a bunch, it's it's yeah. doable as long as you're around them and you've got the right gear. It's a, it's a really good time. <laughs> Look at all the fish down there, you guys. Just absolutely loaded. And more often than not, you know, I brought him up to about 50 feet below the boat and now he's swimming all the way back down to bottom. You can just see him coming up here, um, dispelling his air, you know, he's, he's getting rid of his, uh, you know, his air bladder's full of air and he's, he's slowly just kind of discharging all those bubbles right through here. You can actually see it on that hummingbird unit. We like to just bring him up nice and easy. There he goes, taking another run. But if you bring him up nice and easy, don't you agree, Ron and James, like, Try not to force them up through the water column and just take it easy and you know you can successfully release these fish and all the way out to like 120. Yeah. This segment is brought to you by Wavy Label Eyewear. Backed by a lifetime warranty, we see what others don't. That's one thing that's really nice about that, about these fish here, where versus king salmon, by the time you get them in the boat, they're pretty much done. done. Yeah. Yeah, you can't, they're sort of unreleasable. Ron, what's happening? We got them in close here, Jeff. You, 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 oh, you, so, oh, we see the beast down. I we do. See, we see the beast. We've got. Here, we've got to turn, turn that GoPro on on that. Wow. Nice fish. Oh. Yeah. Nice job. I'll bring him up to you. Alrighty. Oh, it's a beautiful fish. He's got those awesome colored fins on him. Looks like this is a planter, as you can see. He's got an adipose clip. Um, but just a super healthy fish. Absolutely gorgeous. Love it. <laughs> Let's get him back in the water. Catch him again. Gosh. Oh, there you go. Sort of interesting, these fish, they're, they're a little bit uh, gun shy this morning. It seems like that really softer cadence is working better versus, I'm used to, you know, when you're fishing jigging spoons like this, really that more erratic popping behavior has a tendency to trigger. Double up, James. And it seems like that right now, based on their mood, a little bit softer jig stroke seems like it's triggering the fish better. You're spot on, and it's so funny some days, you know, when we get clients out, we get three or four people, and everyone starts off just a little bit different. You try to coach them to start, you know, a certain way, and everyone seems to have their own way of starting, and someone will start getting ahead. They're up two, they're up three, they're up four, and then it's like, all right, everyone, watch what they're doing. And then everyone switches over, and everyone starts swinging. And this has been exactly one of those days. <laughs> Everybody <this morning>. starts swinging. <laughs> oh, you wow. want me to come down there and wow. get that one, or do you want me here. to come Ooh, over nice to you? Nice fish there, wow, James. Look at him. Boy, he really launched it. I did. Yes. Well, come here, buddy. Mine's waking up. Well, waking up. Down oh, she goes. Ate that one really deep. Deep. Didn't he? Yep. Wow, wow, nice fish. Wow. That means you're doing the right cadence, James. That looks good. Yeah, it's just, it's just, <laughs> he lunch time. It's, come wow. here, buddy. Wow. Vertical jigging lake trout boils down to a handful of baits that enable you to fish deep water fast. They're so sporadic. People don't think of lake trout as being a quick fish. It's amazing how quick they can come up or turn and go right back down. There he goes. <laughs> Number one is a heavy vertical jigging spoon, like a two or three ounce lure Jensen crippled herring. Figuring out the right jigging cadence is key. Sometimes an aggressive two or three foot rod pop will trigger strikes. At other times, a softer eight inch twitch might be best. You have to experiment every time to figure out what the fish are willing to bite. Just a perfect day out here this morning. Sun's glowing through, waters are calm. Doesn't get much better than this. Unless you double up, James, then it'll get a little bit better. Blade baits like the Rapala Ripping Blade is another option. They can be worked with a bottom ripping presentation, or a vertical pumping retrieve in the middle of the water column for suspended trout. What type of uh, conditions do you like like for this as far as the uh, weather conditions? Or does it, make, does, does it seem like it makes any difference? 
Ideally, we want a little chop, you know, just like most species, if it's slick calm, they can be a little bit touchy, but usually you still have that first light bite. That's really good for the first, you know, hour, hour and a half, that kind of gray light. But if you have a wind, you know, these fish will stay on all day. Another good vertical jigging bait is the Jigging Wrap Magnum. It weighs one and one eighth of an ounce. This bait drops like a rock, and when you vertically jig it, it shoots sideways in different directions. This is a great triggering technique for lake trout. Yeah, so you and I were kind of up playing with those fish that were suspended at like 95, and I noticed one starting to creep off the bottom. We've got our graph zoomed in really nicely, and kind of, you know, we've got our top range of 70, bottom range of 120, and uh, I noticed one kind of looking. Um, almost like a, a dog that's kind of excited. He's ready to go chase the ball and it started dropping down. He started rising and we met halfway right and, and yeah. here we are. Got a little bit of color coming now. You can't forget about soft plastics when it comes to lake trout. Last but not least is a one ounce VMC swim bait jig rigged with a big bite salt tube or jerk minnow is a producer anywhere lake trout swim. That last burst of energy out. Come here, buddy. There we go, come here, buddy. There we go. Beautiful. There we go. There we go. Gorgeous fish. Just a healthy fish. We see a bunch of this size. So that was on a number eight shad wrap. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You want to be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. We are loaded for bear. We got you know, there's so many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rides on a planet. Gorgeous fish. Just a healthy fish. We see a bunch of this size. With all the LYs we've had in the uh, lake and the gobies, these fish have no lack of food. And let's send him back home. He's ready to go. Gorgeous. All right. See you, baby. Try to be gentle with them and you ease them on down, get this net out of the way so you guys can see a little more. Hold them there, let them relax, and when they start kicking, they're good to go. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and break down kind of our graph setup here for, for jigging. Right now, I've got it kind of stocked like it would come, and it works really good. You can see the fish down there, but there's a lot of, you know, bottom here that's just not functional, a lot of top space here that just doesn't do anything for us with the way we're fishing. So as we kind of turn here, I'm gonna go into my menu, just pressing menu once, and I'm gonna to go to my sensitivity. And I like to run that around, uh, we'll keep it at 15, 16 right now. It looks a little hot, but we're gonna clean that up. I'm gonna run my contrast up a little bit to about 19, and you can see it really cleaning up the picture there. And we're just, just kind of a feel thing. You're, I'm always constantly playing with this, and you can do the sensitivity easily, of course, with the plus and minus button for increasing and decreasing on the fly. But we're not done yet. We're gonna go in and we're gonna fine tune the zone we wanna see. So really, we're looking at 120 right now to about 70 being our primary zone of interest. So let's go down, we're gonna to go to lower range first, and we're gonna run that all the way, just hold it down. We're gonna take it over to 120, and we'll fine tune about there. And then we'll take our upper range, and we're gonna run that down to about that 70, 75, 80 number, a little too far, we'll back it up. You can see right there looking really pretty. And let's kind of set us up here for James. We got some fish coming in. So let's take this in. We're gonna dial in a little more because we came up higher. We're gonna zoom in on the zone we like. And this is just something I'm always doing. I'm always kind of fine tuning. And Captain Chad, if you could hit spot lock for me, that'd be phenomenal. Let's zoom in a little more here. This looks really good. So there we've got those fish. And the final touch I like to do for jigging these trout is I want our chart speed Instead of being at five, I want it at 10. That gives us the fastest returns. Something else that's really crucial is getting this A-scope color frame over here. To do that, you go into Menu, Menu, and you go into your Sonar tab, and you're gonna work your way down to the RTS window. Here's where it is standard. When it's off, you can't see anything, but I really like the color A-scope because it allows you to see this real-time column. Like right now, we can pick out James jigging right here. Ooh, those fish didn't quite like that. Here he goes down chasing them. Right there, now he's right on them again. Ooh, here comes one off the bottom. So what this window is on the right is it's the real time that I like to call it, because you're seeing everything exactly when it's happening. And really, we're just watching these first, you know, this first kind of fourth of the screen to see the most recent information that's happening and that allows us to know if we need to go up, if we need to go down with our jig, 
or if we need to slow down or change a cadence, it allows us to see exactly how those fish are reacting and when they're reacting to it and allows us to get a whole lot more bites. You know, for this style of fishing, you know, the right rod and reel is really pretty, pretty critical. We're fishing deep water. Right now I'm fishing with a seven foot six medium heavy moderately fast tapered rod. Now this is a really power, powerful rod that you can actually hook fish in deeper water. I got it spooled with 30 pound test with like 15 to 20 feet of fluorocarbon leader, which is a 15 foot long section of it with, uh, with the FG knot. But one other important part of the puzzle is the reel. I have a 300 Tatula here. This is a, actually a really fast reel, 7.1 gear ratio reel. A lot of times you're hooking these fish and you're reeling it up and they're hitting the bait and they keep on swimming up. So when you get a strike, you gotta reel up on them really quickly to keep your line tight. The other thing that's sort of nice with this 300, it actually has a pretty wide spool that enables you to be fishing with heavier line and be able to maintain the uh, your uh, gear ratio with the reel, even with a lot of line off, because a lot of times, as you see, you know, we're fishing in you know 80 to 100 foot of water, so you have a lot of line off the reel. But the right rod and reel makes it a lot easier for this style of fishing. How are we looking, gentlemen? Do we have any more takers around here? You know, you you made a really good point earlier, James, talking about you know the innovations in technology and how. Spot lock specifically makes it so easy for, you know, not just us doing this with lake trout, but walleye and salmon and crappie and so many other species where, you know, like a lot of people, you guys have a sonar mounted on your, you know, on your, on your uh, trolling motor and that's facing down, which is key because when you're looking for these fish, you're slowly cruising around and, you know, you mark them on that front sonar and you're able to stop the forward propulsion and put the boat in neutral and hit spot lock and it gives you a little time. You're kind of ahead of the game, uh, especially these guys that are using forward facing sonar. You know, you can see them 60, 70 feet out, slow down um, and then drop vertical on them and you're, you're already in the fish. Um, and having like detailed mapping systems on these hummingbird units is so important because you can see the inside turns and the steep breaks and that's typically where all these fish are hanging out. It just really makes life a lot easier. That's, that's for sure. Not as much of a guessing game. There we go. Got him. There you go. On the dead stick. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. Dude, that's what I'm talking about. These die with drag. We got walleye stuff. We got crappie stuff. We got pike stuff. This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. Incredible. 11 year warranty. There we Got go. Got him. There you go. On the dead stick. On the what were you doing? So I was just doing like a six inch lift, kind of like what Ron was doing earlier. And then I was trying to do a, normally I do like a half a second to a one second pause, but that time I did like a two second pause and he just came up and hit it like a, like, like a perch rick. <laughs> a perch, a big perch. Yeah, exactly. Yes. exactly. Might clip a perch. Oh man, yeah. it never gets old. No. So much fun. Oh, yes. Wow, these St. Croix rods are really nice. I know they handle really big, powerful fish with that uh, moderate, fast action. Yes, they do. You know, heavy power is farther back down the blank and it really fights this big, strong fish really well. Okay, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on up here, bud. Yep, I'm, I'm with, I'm, I'm, in, I'm gunning, I'm with the game. You're really sort of soft-shoeing him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he kind of was kicking what? my butt, kicking my butt a few times there. I like that. Yeah. This is kind of nice. Ron and I like this on the, being on the catching end. It's phenomenal. Yeah, I know, you That's guys, it's sort of a pleasure to actually get to go out with two, two charter captains. So, yeah, these guys don't get to, you know, when their fish are biting, they're not catching. Come here, but, oh, oh, come Ooh, on. great net, James. Go. Nice. Just came unbuttoned. Here, get that hook like right there. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah, that's a beautiful fish. Good Look job. I'm kidding you, they're just such a gorgeous fish. Look at the girth on them things. These guys here got so much food in them. Okay. We've probably caught, what, 10 or 15 fish this morning? 12? It's, it's 12 been, fish. It's been 12 busy. <laughs> and lots of these guys here. Now, now you're talking. <laughs> Talk, look at the, look at that. Is that a beautiful animal? No question about it. 
Man, thanks a lot. I, I got to come out here and do this some more. This is one of my favorite activities, no question about it. It's so great to have you guys out here. We love fishing with you and, and love to show you the resources we have here. Yeah. Well, you guys even, yeah, you guys even get to catch some. <laughs> Makes get, it let's fun. get that runt back in the water. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Hey, I want to take a moment to share with you something that had a huge impact on my life. When my brother and I and our family had old In Fisherman Communications Network, we sold it many, many years ago. And one of the things that we did was started a professional walleye tournament trail. We, we did a magazine, radio shows, massive tournament, and we helped take the walleye world and take it to another level. When that was happening, the anglers formed an organization called the NPAA. National Professional Anglers Association. It's still in effect today, but it is much larger naturally. At, the, at their, their banquet, they were honoring us for our contribution to the sport fishing industry, especially the walleye world. And my brother got up and he did his thank yous after the introduction. And when I got up there, I talked a little bit about that, that, that and, and I, I made the statement, I don't believe there's another in fisherman in me. When I said those words, it's like the Spirit of God tugged at my heart and said, watch your words, I'm not done with you yet. Watch your words, I'm not done with you yet. That's what I heard in my heart. And I mean, it, was, it wasn't audio, it's there. And it just burned into my mind. Well, well, the fruit of what happened there is what you're watching today. Angling Edge Television is 20 odd years old, little over 20 years old, this show. It's the same format that was planted in my seed and after I talked to my brother to glorify God with the closings on the show and talk about the Bible and, 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 and how it's impacted our lives. But that gives you an idea on how God works in your life way in advance. He's orchestrating people, places, circumstances of life for us to move along and get there. And by the way, today, Linder Media Productions not only produces Angling Edge, we, we do Lund, the ultimate fishing experience, the Canadian experience, Angling Buzz, Angling Buzz Ice. We do 65 original shows in about a seven month period. That's a lot of work. Thank you, Lord, for that blessing on our life. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good safe fishing season. Hey, we'll see you on the water.